دع الأيام تفعل ما تشاء وطب نفسا إذا حكم القضاء ولا تجزع لحادثة الليالي فما لحوادث الدنيا بقاء وكن رجلا على الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون لا يحصي عدد نعمه العادون ولا يؤدي شكره المتحمدون ولا يبلغ مدى عظمته الواصفون بديع السماوات والأرض إذا قضى أمراً فإنما يقول له كن فيكون أما بعد Dear Muslims, be conscious of Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون do you know what was the first act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated and taught to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was the first ritual that was legislated in Islam? 
It is recorded in our books of Sunnah and Seerah that the day after Ya Ayyuhal Muzzammil was revealed, the day after the very second revelation came, Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and spent a day with him and he taught him wudu and salah. For one day, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and then Fajr, Jibreel alayhi salam taught the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam how to do wudu and then the timings of the salah. So today's brief khutbah will be a topic that perhaps we think we know. But in reality, it is something that is so simple and blessed and fundamental that even if we know it, a reminder is encouraging and good. It shall be about the blessings and the importance of the first ritual and that is wudu. We are all taught as children the famous hadith that At-Tahuru Shatrul Iman and we translate it as cleanliness is half of faith and that is not an incorrect translation. But the more precise translation is wudu is half of faith. Because At-Tahur here doesn't just or primarily mean having a clean body. At-Tahur is with a fatha and that means the water that is used to perform the wudu. So yes, being pure, being clean is half of Iman. But the implication in this hadith is making sure you do wudu and maintaining your wudu is half of Iman. Why? Why is this one small ritual that takes half a minute that we just do without even thinking that we walk into the restroom in front of the sink and split splash and we're done. Why is this equivalent to half of the entire Iman? Because wudu is symbolic of everything else. Think about it. Who does wudu? The one who prays regularly. And who prays regularly? The righteous and the pious. So the wudu is the key that unlocks all the doors of piety. As our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hadith is in Tirmidhi, لا يحافظ على وضوئه إلا مؤمن Nobody is able to maintain their wudu except the mu'min. Who does wudu all the time? Who is the one that is constantly asking, am I in wudu or not? Who is the one that will go back and forth and cleanse themselves? It is the one who is the mu'min. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, none shall protect their wudu except for the mu'min. And in fact, in one of the hadith of Jibreel, the famous hadith of Jibreel, when Jibreel asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what is Islam? Of course, that famous response of five pillars is given. But in some versions, another pillar is added. And that is the version of Ibn Khuzaymah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam adds before Salah, he says, and that you do wudu before every Salah and pray five times a day. So the phrase is added, a part of Islam is to make sure that you do wudu regularly. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam strongly encouraged us to do wudu even if we have wudu when we stand up to pray. In the famous hadith he said, were it not something that would be too difficult for my ummah, I would have commanded them to do wudu every time they stand up to pray. This is a beautiful hadith, memorize it. The Prophet is saying, I know it's difficult and that's why I am not, I'm not commanding it. If you have wudu, you can pray. If you have wudu, you can pray. You've had wudu from Dhuhr, it's Asr time, go ahead and pray. But what did he say? Were it not for the fact that it would be too difficult for my ummah, I would have commanded them, I would have required that every time they stand up to pray, they should do the wudu again. And we all know the famous hadith that never does a person take water in his hand and bring it to his mouth, except that when he spits that water out, every ghibah, every namima, every sin that his mouth has done also washes away. And when he washes his hand, everything that his hand has touched that he should not touch, it washes away. When he washes his eyes and face, every sin that the eyes have done washes away. So the repetition of wudu is something that will cleanse our deeds. And that is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever does wudu and prays regularly, it shall be a kafara, a means of forgiving all the sins that are done in between. If we do wudu and pray five times a day, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that inshallah we can be optimistic that the other sins that we do, it is going to be a kafara or an expiation of all that is done. And in fact, we have in that beautiful hadith as well, the hadith of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala an, that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he came back from Isra and Mi'raj, he said, O oh Bilal, I visited Jannah and I heard the flip-flop of your shoes 
already there. How did you get there? Of course, the, the notion here is not that Bilal entered Jannah before. Obviously, the Prophet will eventually enter Jannah when it opens up. But this is Isra wal Mi'raj, and it's an indication. The Prophet was meant to ask Bilal, You're doing something special. I heard your footsteps, and I'm already there, and you're already ahead of me. Not that he would enter, but that Bilal has a blessed place. So the Prophet said, Oh Bilal, what are you doing that is causing me to hear your footsteps in Jannah? And Bilal famously remarked, I don't know anything, O Messenger of Allah, except that every time that I break my wudu, I stand up and do wudu and pray two rak'at. Every time, I'm constantly in the state of wudu, and I'll just pray two rak'at when I do wudu. The one deed that he could think of, subhanAllah, how much blessed it became that even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this manner, that it is something that will bring about uh, the, the admittance to Jannah and being very high in Jannah. And in one hadith, Abu Huraira narrated that on the Day of Judgment, every single believer will have markings, will have a shine coming from him. And he said the famously that المؤمن, that the shine of the believer will be the places that he would do wudu from. The shine of the believer is where he is doing wudu from. Therefore, that means that wherever we do wudu, it is going to be a sign, it is going to be a blessing, it is going to be a light that is coming from us. And of course, wudu leads to salah. Wudu and salah are in intertwined and we know from the hadith that Jahannam will never touch any place of our body that we used to do sajda on. Anybody who regularly did sajda, Jahannam will never touch the places, the face and the hands and the feet that would do sajda to Allah. So wudu and salah are intrinsically linked together and their blessings will be seen in this world before the next. Dear brothers in Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam, much can be said about the wudu, but there's one hadith that I find the most amazing and the most optimistic. And it is one that I constantly remind myself of, and I want you all to also memorize it. In a beautiful hadith reported in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting amongst the Sahaba, and he said, how I wish I could see my brethren, my ikhwah, so the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, are we not your brethren? Are we not your ikhwa? He said, no, you are my ashab. You are the Sahaba. My ikhwa, my brethren are those who will come after you, have never seen me, and they would love to give everything they have in order to see me. They are my brethren. May Allah make us amongst them. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, how will you recognize your brethren when you haven't seen them? Are you guys paying attention to this beautiful hadith? The Sahaba said, Yarsa, you know us, we know you, but your brethren, how will you recognize them? He said, do you not see the stallions of horses that are white streaks on them? In Arabic it's called ghurran muhajjaleen. And the most prized horses to this day, the most precious horses are the horses that have that white streak on their foreheads and their arms and their legs also have white streaks. They are multicolored. And if you look at any, you know, horse photography, right? These are the prized photography of the horses to this day. It's ingrained in us that the horse that has this markings is the beautiful horse. The Prophet ﷺ said, if one of you had one of those horses and a lot of horses that are the same color brown, would you not be able to spot that one ghurran muhajjaleen, that one stallion horse amongst the entire herd of horses? They said, of course, O Messenger of Allah, of course you can spot that one horse. So he said, in the same way, my ummah shall come ghurran muhajjaleen min athar al wudu. Their faces and their limbs will be standing out from the crowd. Millions of people are on Qiyamah day, but I'll be able to spot based on what, dear Muslims? Based on what? Ghurran muhajjaleena min athar al wudu. From the effects of the wudu, their faces will be shining bright. Their arms and limbs will be shining bright. So I will be able to spot them on that crowd on the day of judgment. And then he shall be able to call them to drink from the hawd and the pool. Wallahi, dear Muslims, if this was the only blessing of wudu, if this was the only mark of wudu, it would be enough of an incentive for us to be continuous in our wudu. How much more when we have more than 
12 blessings uh, that I'm not even able to mention, more than a dozen blessings that are separate for wudu. What then of the blessings of this small deed? Dear Muslims, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the most blessed of all deeds to Allah is that which is constant even if it is small. Wudu is small, but if we do it constantly, we shall insha'Allah ta'ala attain a very high blessing in this world and in the akhirah. May Allah make us amongst them. May Allah bless me and you with and through the Quran. And may He make us of those who its verses they understand and apply his halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask Him. He is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد. Dear Muslims, realize that the wudu is only needed for two rituals: the salah and touching the Quran, not reciting the Quran. You may recite the Quran uh, when you're not in wudu, but not in the state of janaba. But to touch the mushaf, you need to have wudu. Some add you should also have wudu for the tawaf. So these are the two or three things that you need wudu for. Anything other than this, it is mustahab. It is good to be in the state of wudu. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would maintain his wudu even when he is not praying. And he would do wudu throughout the day and night. And even before going to sleep and he would do wudu as soon as he woke up in the morning and he would be in the constant state of wudu but this is a nafil this is something that is good but it is not required or mandatory also dear muslims all of us should study the basics of how to do wudu and what breaks wudu because when we increase in our knowledge then by acting on that knowledge we come close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dear muslims the topic today was about wudu but i want to segue into two other concepts number one some might think it to be trivial, but subhanallah, these rituals are the backbone of what makes us Muslim. These rituals are what demarcates and separates us from all other faiths. Our wudu, our salah, our zakah, our siyam, our reciting of the Quran, this is what makes us Muslim. So when we are interested in these things, we are eager for these things, then insha'Allah ta'ala we are demonstrating our Islam. And also increase in our knowledge, in your knowledge, O Muslims. Subhanallah, insha'Allah ta'ala, I hope, after listening to this khutbah and realizing that when you stand in front of the sink and you're doing wudu, this is how your Prophet and my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are going to recognize you. Insha'Allah, that one line will impact the rest of your life. How can you possibly do wudu in a lazy manner? in a manner that doesn't understand the implications when you realize this is the mechanism of cleansing my sins. This is the mechanism that will open the door for Allah's rahmah. And this is the mechanism that our Prophet will recognize us. So, if one hadith can impact the rest of your life, which inshallah it will do from today, then how about more knowledge? How about learning the fiqh of wudu? How about learning tahara and salah? How about learning the ahadith about this beautiful topic? Therefore, Muslims, let this khutbah be an encouragement for all of us to open the door for knowledge. The one who studies Islam begins to enjoy the worship of Allah. The one who has a relationship with the books of sunnah and hadith and fiqh, the one who studies how to worship Allah begins to enjoy the worship of Allah. And the one who doesn't know, the, the, the worship becomes monotonous, robotic, routine. You don't enjoy, you don't have that spirituality. And I gave you one example with this knowledge that will do links us to Allah, links us to Jannah, links us to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah for the rest of our lives, we will never trivialize wudu. So what is going to happen if you study more than just 5-10 minutes? And point number two, and this is just as important, and Imam al-Ghazali mentions this in his Ihya Ulum al din and other great ulama mention this, that we have to be careful that we don't take fiqh as the end-all and be-all. In other words, Imam al-Ghazali mentions, we have to be careful that we're washing ourselves outwardly and we're never once thinking about washing ourselves inwardly. We have to be careful of becoming outer Muslims and not the ones who know that the Sharia goes with tazkiyah of the soul. They go hand in hand. You need the outer law, but you need spirituality as well. There is an implication, there is a reason where in a society they didn't care about tahara and najasa and cleanliness. The Sharia came and they told a society of desert people who didn't have that much water, Allah still mandated, wash, 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 clean, 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 clean. Why? 
because there is a higher spiritual goal of cleaning the heart, cleaning the soul, cleaning the mind. As we constantly wash our outer body, we should make sure our hearts are also pure in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No showing off, no wanting to impress other people. Have a pure heart for our fellow Muslims. So the outer and the inner go hand in hand. And when we do that, then we reach the level of ihsan. Every single outer deed must impact our inner core as well. And the wudu is of the easiest symbols to understand. We are supposed to have an outer cleanliness, but that is meant to indicate an inner cleanliness as well. The outer and the inner should coincide. And that is one of the wisdoms of the wudu. Dear Muslims, some might think this uh, act to be trivial, but in reality, if we understand that wudu is the opening of salah and that all of this is of the fundamental uh, pillars of our religion, then we understand how blessed and important these rituals are. Indeed, al wudu or al tahuru shatrul iman, and no one can protect and maintain the wudu except the ultimate believers. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us amongst them. Allahumma in the idain fa aminum. Allahumma la tar'a fi hadhi yomi thamman illa ghafarta, wala hamman illa farajta, wala dainan illa qadai. ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأبن بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدس وثلث بكم أيها المنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قال عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحون يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون